Hello. Today, we're going to talk about the language of love. Maybe not that. But we're talking about a very important concept. The five love languages and how we can use them to make our daily emotional practice better. So I have assembled um, around um, 15, 16, maybe 18 ideas, how you can improve your relationship with others, which then improves your own emotional, um, your emotional satisfaction. And um, this is based on uh, the, I'm in the book about the five love languages. So this book tells you that there are five basic ways people communicate with each other. One is positive affirmation. Some people really like um, to get praised. And you can do them a huge favor if you recommend them or if you mention that they did a great job and, and that kind of thing. Then other people are very receptive to touch, right? Those are the people that, like, um, that, uh, like, um, um, how do you call that? Massage each other's shoulders or punch you friendly in the stomach and, um, and pat you on the back. Um, those are people that thrive on touch. And then some people really love to give and receive gifts and others like favors done for them. And then there's a fifth group that favors quality time, right? The five love languages, positive affirmation, touch, gifts, favors, and quality time. And the same way that others communicate their appreciation in different ways, you are also most receptive, of course, to a specific mix of these five different languages. So let's take one step back. What is the principle of making connection? The principle of making connection is giving first. And my favorite example of that is Google. If you go to google.com, you see that there's basically an empty screen and all there is is the search window. That's it. You type in what you're looking for and then Google takes you there. And this is basically um, Google giving. Google doesn't ask for you to visit the page or do them some favors. It doesn't hawk any, any banner ads or any affiliate links. None of that. Just has the search window. And because you can so conveniently search for other things and get results, you'll always come back to Google. That's like a good friend who is a big connector has lots of people he can hook you up with. You always go back to that person because that person is the hub of all different um, ways you want to build relationships. And that's what you want to be. You want to be the person who gives. And um, I think Gary Vaynerchuk said in some of his videos that you have to give, like, make sure that you give, like, 51% in every relationship. Like, a little bit more. That's already enough. Um, give a little bit more and... First of all, you'll have more fun. You have a better emotional experience because the act of giving itself is fun. Being altruistic is fun. And then you receive. And on the long run, all the favors you do and all the energy you invest is exactly that, an investment. Right? So based on these five different ways people show their love language, um, you can design several ideas how to how to deliver value and how to make a better emotional connection and if you find ways to do that daily then it's a very strong part of your of your daily practice imagine whenever you went down right whenever whenever you felt sad or like the whole world was against you um i don't know how you think about that but i am always someone if i connect to friends things are half as bad as they were we as humans, we crave connection. And so that's one of the most important parts you can add to your daily routine. Now, I thought about some ideas and I want to share them with you. 
and um, maybe you get inspired, maybe you can put some of them to work. And I've explained them in my in the blog post that belongs to this video. And um, here they are. The first idea, figure out yours and your friend's love language, right? What I said before. You can read the book about the five love language. I think the author's name is Chapman. Um, Mike Cernovich has a detailed review on it. And um, you can also go to the corresponding web page and take, take a test what your language is. Um, by the way, mine is words of praise, so feel free to give me a nice comment. Just kidding. Not really. Um, and so that's number one. Figure out yours and your friend's love language. Number two, try to make a stranger laugh. So this can, can be someone sitting close to you in the commute, standing in line in the grocery store, or he, come, he or she can be on your way to work. Um, it could be a funny remark or observation. Um, if it doesn't come naturally to you, just say something sympathetic about, oh yeah, traffic is, traffic is a lot, or you're waiting for the bus as well, oh well, let's just hijack that car that goes there, or whatever comes to your mind. Or you tell them a or you maybe think about the joke that you tell people. Just try to make the person smile about something. It can be also something nice that you observed um, about the environment and, you know, just, just try to make the person smile. Um, and that would be idea number two. Idea number three is when you're at the coffee shop, taste the coffee of the person behind you in the coffee store. Or the one in front of you, whatever works better. Um, this basically people are surprised and really thankful when you do it. Some of them just run away, <laughs> seriously, because they are scared by what you do to them. Um, but most of them will really appreciate um, your action, and it makes a good connection. And the coffee really, really doesn't cost more. It doesn't cost much. Number four. Call someone, simple and easy. Call a friend or a relative, anyone you know. Or if it's someone at work, take that person out for a coffee. The point is just to have a chat. Number five, look for opportunities to do someone a favor. Right? If the person someone sees someone carrying some, something heavy on the street, take the weight off their shoulders. And you think, wait, isn't everyone doing that? But you'd be surprised how many people, myself included, walk by without doing anything, without even noticing, right? Train your eye to look for what people are doing. And you'll see some people that struggle with moving something and, and so on and so forth, right? Um, if you see a couple arguing, step in and just offer advice. No, don't do that. But, you know, you see a lot of different people doing different things and, you know, just... just um, do the classic help an old lady across the street. Um, then number six, leave a nice comment on someone's blog. If you go on the internet, you see someone who leaves a lot of comments on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you are, um, or he has a nice blog, just leave a comment for the person. They'll appreciate it. And if there are a lot of Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, then they probably crave attention anyway. So you might as well just chime in and you may make, you may make the day. Um, then small favors. So your friends and relatives, uh, train yourself to spec what they are, what they are talking about um, or what they are doing. For example, if your spouse has a DVD case she needs to bring back, then if the DVD store is on your way next time you go to work, you just take the DVD for her and bring it back so she doesn't have to go the extra mile. Um, or somebody needs needs a favor, like somebody wants to go home a little earlier so you can take over that person's shift if it's just 30 minutes more. And if your time is free, just do it. Um, because um, that's basically how giving each other favors works, right? Um, investment. And It'll buy you a lot of goodwill, and if you do that, you may actually 
get the favor repaid. Or actually, man, just, just be nice from time to time is actually fun, as I said before. Um, so then there's also an easy way to finding the right gifts. If you listen to people intently, they'll tell you, oh, I wish I just had this. Or I wish somebody had thought about why. Or I never seem to get round to buying Z. Right? So you take X, Y, Z, you have an Excel file, and then you put it in. And over time, you have a database of things that people mentioned once and then probably forgot. You have a database of people's ideas. And what that means is that you fulfill, and you have the opportunity to fulfill somebody's wish maybe two years after he mentioned it. That person will be super surprised and be absolutely happy that you, uh, that you gave him that and will be completely surprised how you could read his or her mind. Wow. So that is how you can give a lot of fun, a lot of, uh, a lot of joy and happiness. Or in the spirit of this whole challenge, you can think about 10 ideas based on, based on item X that you can give someone who's looking for X. Like uh, if someone says, I never seem to have enough time or I always seem to, I always seem to miss um, the time of my favorite, favorite lecture. I, or I always, I always seem to miss the bus, right? So you could think of ways like one way, get the person a timer that, or an alarm clock uh, that he can, maybe, maybe in the shape of a bus, that he can now always remember to go to the bus. Or if the person says, hey, I always seem to miss the bus, but um, always seems, or also seems to miss a watch, get that person a watch. Maybe something he didn't even think about, but you thought about it, and then you show that, that, you, that, you, that you care about the person, have thought a little bit for the person, right? Those are some things you can do. Um, number nine, recommend someone or, and or his work. So mention someone who created something nice or delivered good work to someone else. Um, or you offer someone to give him a letter of reverence that he can attach on LinkedIn. Something like that, where it becomes visible for everyone. And that means you're doing a huge favor for someone. And even if that someone is not there, if you are always in the mind of helping someone, if you talk to... If you, so there's some people that do a big mistake, right? They talk to their boss or they talk to a friend and then they shit talk about other people in the hope that they would elevate themselves over that person. That's a big no-no because the only thing you show with that is that you can't be trusted, that when people show you their backs, you will talk shit about them because the person you talk to doesn't really know about the other person you talk shit. So never do that, but instead talk nicely about someone. Always talk the nicest thing about someone else even if you have a colleague who you get really annoyed with, if someone who is not from your group comes to visit and so somehow the talk is about that colleague and he's not there, you say nothing but good things about the person. Because maybe for one, that person really has some good core, right? And you just might have missed it. And B, you're giving yourself good feelings by talking nicely and not trash talking someone. Um, there's a saying, if you point with a finger to someone, you always point with three fingers to yourself. It has some truth to it, right? But you want to get into the spirit of giving. Always recommend people. I mean, and if people don't are not worthy, in your opinion, of being recommendations, sim simply don't say anything about them, right? But if you can, recommend them. Find a little bit that you can recommend them for. And um, for, whatever, for whatever strange reason, I can't really explain it, but the universe will come back to you and um, that's, I think that's karma. Karma will come back to you. I'm a big believer of that. And because I'm a big believer of that, that is what I exude. And uh, you can too. If you just, if you believe, um, if you believe in talking, talking good about other people, if mentioning them by name, um, then you will grow yourself in a very positive way. Right? Recommending is the single best way you can do it. We're going back to Google, right? Google also recommends things. You search for something and Google gives you the recommended web pages. Nice. And you find what you're looking for, you go back to Google. You recommend someone, the person you talk to hires that someone to do work, 
the person's happy with that work and you'll always remember that you were the first to recommend that person. You solidify the connection and the person that you recommended is also happy because you gave him some work, basically. It's a net win. See how that works? Give, 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 and you will receive. Number 10, in the same spirit, work for free. Um, especially true when you're in the beginning of building a relationship, always work for free. I see it so many times. People say, oh, they offered to do us a favor, but then I saw that I didn't really like what that company does. So I just declined. They can go to hell. And that is so extremely stupid. If someone wants to do, if, 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 you, if you have the opportunity to work for someone or to work with someone and you're at the beginning and just building up your brand, you know, or you're just getting to know the person, you are best off if you offer work for free, right? Unless it is like you join a company and, and your roles are clearly defined as an employee. But even then, I would go the extra mile and deliver some extra work for free because that is an investment. That's how you build goodwill. That's how you build exposure, that people will remember, you oh, look, this guy, this guy, um, he has, you know, this girl, he has, she has really... This woman has really went far beyond. She over-delivers all the time. And then you get recommended to other people. And uh, maybe when doing work for free, you also realize that that work is actually really fun to do. And maybe you branch out on your own and take some of that work with you, right? To start your own company. It can all happen. Uh, I'm not saying overwork yourself. Um, always work like overtime unpaid. Of course not. But just... Just be happy if you get offered some work and just be just be willing to do some of that for free. Just don't make a drama about it, right? And that is the way and how you thrive. Um, then there is some, some interesting effect. I call it the Benjamin Franklin effect. It's item number 11. So there was this... So when Benjamin Franklin was, uh, was a politician in his later life and um, he was at the, at the um, Continental Congress when it... When it uh, when it, I don't know, the when, when it came together to debate. And there was one politician that really, that Franklin, Benjamin Franklin couldn't build a connection to him. Right? And, and so what he did, he heard that that politician had a rare book in his possession. Back in, short its course, back in the 18th century, books were a rarity. So we can be freaking grateful that we have books that we can download electronically. Back then, it was a sensation, more or less, if someone had a book, right? So Benjamin Franklin asked to borrow this book from the person. And so that was a request that was small enough that the person couldn't deny. So he said, all right, okay. And he was also flat because Franklin said, man, you, we are of different opinion politically, but I heard you have this great, great, great book. I always wanted to get my hand on it. Can I please borrow it for one evening? Get it back tomorrow as soon as possible. Yeah, and the person agreed. And of course, Franklin brought it back as soon as he could. So now the other person who, had, who possessed the book, uh, he, he had in his mind the notion that he already did a favor for Franklin. And now Franklin had a much easier way to persuade this person to work for him, or at least not sabotage him or be a contrarian to him. So if you get people to, to do you a favor, and no matter how small it is, you can ask someone, oh, can I quickly borrow your pen? Sure, the person will say, and then that person has already done you a little favor. From there, you can ask a little bit of a bigger favor, you know, and it's like a, you can also call it a yes letter. Give people something, do a request. Don't pitch your whole business everything you want. Pitch a little bit to people. So give them a chance to say yes. Because I believe that people want to say yes. They want to be able to, to, you know, to help you. right? Give them, or at least some people want. So give them possibility. Give them the opportunity. So they help you with a small thing that they can do. Now they already, now, and who do you do favors for? For people you like. right? So even if you don't have an opinion about the person, or maybe don't even like the person much, now you might think, well... What does this person mean? Oh, we did him a favor. That must mean we like that person, right? And then once you did a little favor, 
you can do the next favor, you can ask the next favor, and then and then you know then you can build up a relationship over time. Um, you know where it also is at work is um, when you have these email opt-in forms, right? And often they ask they have a double opt-in. So what you do is you so they, they have this banner that pops up say hey join our amazing mailing list, and then you click on OK, and then it gets you to a second window where it says. That's great that you do it. If you really want to join, please confirm here. So, and then you have a double click. That means you have done two commitments. The first commitment was easy, you just clicked. Then the program asks you for another commitment. You click again. Now you know in your mind you clicked already twice. You committed. You know, automatically you click on something, and if I do it, normally I start paying more attention to the second click, right? And then I get a little bit more invested. While the first click is often just to get rid of this window. The second click really solidifies the relationship. So work with small favors and, uh, and you shall receive bigger ones over time. And then number 12, under or better over promise and always, always, always over deliver. Right? Someone asks you for a favor, you promise what you're sure you can fulfill. And then you go beyond your initial promise in delivering the work. Nothing is worse than over promising and under deliver. No, don't do that. But um, you under deliver, yeah, you under promise and then over deliver. And if you want to make it really count, over promise a little bit and then over little, over deliver massively. Um, with time, you realize what. With more experience, you realize what you can do in a given amount of time, and then you can promise that and just do it a day faster or do ten percent more, go above and beyond what is asked, and that way, that way, you build trust because. People know that they that you always deliver the basic without any hassle and then some, right? So who do they give the next job to? Next business opportunity, who do they recommend? You, because you always over deliver. Number 13, those were some more suggestions to talk to people specifically in different love languages, right? So if somebody speaks a language of gifts, right? Next time you talk to someone, you just at work just offer that person to pay him a coffee. Or a dessert when you're at the coffee store or something. Just give him something out of out of out of thin air. Come up with a little gift. Right? Um, then somebody who likes to be touched. You can touch the person on the lower arm, right? You go forward. If you make a point, you you deliver your point and then you pat the person on the hand or lower arm. Not high arm, not shoulder, here. That is not socially that's socially um, that is um, socially acceptable. And um, and you build a connection because that person likes likes touch, and um, you can also end it with a handshake. I've I've realized that not everyone expects a handshake, but some people are really are really very very uh, appreciative of that. Or you give them a hug when you know them for longer. He's a friend and he likes to be touched. You give them a hug when you, when you leave, right? And number. Uh, uh, for someone who speaks the language of praise, right? You, you praise someone you know, right? You praise that person directly to his face. I really like what you did. Or you recommend this person to your boss. You tell them specifically what you like. So if you like me, if you like praise, um, for example, someone would say, oh, I realize you have a good memory for music. And actually that's true. I can memorize music music well, right? Um, I'm not doing other and th- you know, among the few things that I do well, music I can remember. And so somebody mentioned that to me, that made me happy, right? And um, and whatever it is, you can mention their work ethic or their how, how smart they are or their w- personal warmth, anything like that. And recall some specific example, oh, I really liked how you did this, this and that back when we met a week later, a week before. Um, other example, uh, a colleague at work um, would always tell me, so I, they, we had a new colleague and I was leaving the lab like three years ago and I noticed him sitting on the bench in front of the institute and I knew he was coming so I just said hello to him and wished him good luck for his next, for his introduction with his, with our group leader and he always recalled that um, and, 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 um, he apparently appreciated that, but I also appreciated that he told me, right? 
So that's how I thrive on. And uh, number number four would be somebody speaks the language of time, right? Then you can just schedule some time off, like 30 minutes, and then offer to sit down with someone and talk to that person who values time. And you really have to leave your leave your cell phones away, like just devote him your un undivided uh, attention. And then number five, someone likes the language of favor. Well, you know, ask if you can take over someone's weekend shift. Maybe you're in town anyway, so you can just drop by uh, your work. Or um, maybe your friend has to deliver a letter, you take him, take him with him. Um, my last lab, we had to give um, specific research samples to analysis. And um, so frequently when some of us, someone of us would, would go down to... to put the samples into the mailbox, we just offered to take somebody else's samples with us. And that's a, that's a nice little favor, right? It doesn't need to be something big. It can be something small, but the, it's, it counts that you do a favor. Um, and yeah, all these gifts and favors, all the praises and touches, everything that you give, they're investments really into a more stable friendship and better connection. And, and the surprising thing is, when you connect with some people and always give value, others want to be part of that. I don't know how they know, how they realize that. I don't know how humans sense valuable person, valuable people, but, but humans flock to people that are valuable and deliver good emotion is another thing. If you're always like friendly and always come in friendly and we say hello at work, um, you make a connection right away because you deliver value, you deliver good emotions. Right? You always cheer, cheer people up. If you smile at them, they have to smile a little bit as well. Boom! They're more happy. You know? Just If you're sad, just try to smile anyway. And you start, be, start becoming happier. So, smile when you go everywhere. Spread good emotions. Um, that is another way to solidify emotional connections. And, and with that comes um, um, growing yourself with positive emotions, right? So I hope that has helped you. Let me know in the comments if, if you liked it. And um, I'm, I'll, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again uh, tomorrow. And for now, have a nice evening and um, happy Thanksgiving. All the best. Bye. So this is the part where I switch off the movie. And here it is. Oh, you're still there? Oh. Thanksgiving.